going into spaces and arenas that are going to be really over a few people's heads. But this is where we go at the university. This is where you have to go in order for you to escape. This is the escape plan to get out of the prison, the seven-barred prison of white light. Dr. V. Ganapati Shatpati is the resurrector, listen, of the ancient Indus Kush high science called Vastu and Vaastu, the 10,000-year-old science founded by the Dravidian Hotep in Hotep named Mahamuni Mahayan or Mamuni Mayan. It was called Vaastu Sastra and today is called the Mayonic Sciences. Grandmaster Ganapati says this science deals with the eternal process of subtle energy manifesting into material space or material form. Through precise mathematical formulas, Mahamuni Mahayan was able to create or recreate the process of pure consciousness, which was absolute space, synthesizing into material consciousness and incorporated that process into architectural structures such as buildings, temples, and statues, as well as into ritual dance, music, and other forms of human consciousness expression. It is within the framework of this ancient science that we will decipher and eventually recode and redesign the cellular architectures of an entirely new and unrepeated dimensional consciousness paradigm for humanity. We cannot keep redoing and regentrifying and keep restructuring and keep putting other coats of paint on this paradigm. It's not going to work. And there's a small, what do you call it, of Mahabun. Mahamuhi Mahayan painted a comprehensive but succinct picture of Brahma as the ultimate and absolute, which he called Ka'ala Brahma. This particular identification of time as Brahma earned Mahamuni the title Ka'ala Jani, or one who recognized time as the causal element of the universe and universal objects, visual and oral forms. Mahayan equated the principles of time and space and evolved a system of spiritual arts that coalesced into poetry, music, dance, architecture, and sculpture of culture, all governed by the principle of energy vibrating into space and spatial-based forms. So, we are all energy that have attenuated in vibrations, and now we have form. We are distinct from the universal flow, the Ma'atian energy that they talk about, the river Hapi of the higher planes. And of course, among his greatest achievements, Mahayana identified the structure of infinite and finite particles. Now, 10,000 years ago, your black ancestor knew about finite and infinite particles. Don't let them make you believe that the sciences that they're getting you all, oh my God, look at what else they did. They're so smart. Remember, we are replaying this. This is a replay. Just somebody else is playing the parts. This is nothing new. Anything that they could discover has been discovered. How many, here's, here's some of my teachings when I say, there was never a time that man M-A-N, that is, mother, father, son, was not. There was never a time that man was not. At the very beginning of beginnings, when they say in the beginning, there is no damn beginning, which means you are an essence, in essence, an eternal entity. If the creator is eternal, then you are eternal. There was no beginning or end to you. There were cycles of participation within consciousness, but you existed at the very beginning and will cease to go into a uh, cease existence or go into unexistence when the time comes. But they talk about the day of Brahma and the night of Brahma. The day of Brahma is everything that you're doing right now. When God is asleep and you all are ignorant as hell. <laughs> but the night of Brahma is when Brahma comes back out of that and the sleep goes back into the real world and there's no more creation, there's no more participation in the illusion and you know what you are. Okay? So, 
When we've made it to the simulated particles. Mahayan defined the vibration of inner space and outer space as quantifiable and was able to identify the structure of energy particles and an order in the development of forms in matter. He desired or described absolute time and used mathematics to define frequency and vibration. The god Shiva, for example, represents the vibration of pure energy and depicts the principle of frequency in the absolute space-time continuum. Mahayan took these fundamental principles and applied them to all manifestations of consciousness. Thus, the force of Ka'alam, hmm? absolute time, pulse, frequency, was seen at, to influence the entire cosmos. Mahayana articulated these and other principles in a number of texts, including the one million verses of the Pranava Vedas. So what did he talk about? I'm saying all of these things for you to take your notes. Don't go to sleep on anything I'm saying here because can be a quiz. <laughs> To understand the true metaphysical meaning of space-time, we must learn to override our perception of time as merely the organized and regimented ticks of a clock. Time, as defined and described by the ancient masters, is a pulse of movement in the beginningness of absolute space. The eight gaunas, or elements, grow one from the other as a result of time. As a result of that movement or pulse against the fabric or membrane of space, own light arises. As time and the own light commingle and flow together with space, own sound arises. Space, time, own light, and own sound commingle, flow together, and condense to form the element air. These all flow together, commingle, and condense to form fire, and so on. The entire process of, quote, becoming is based on the step down of frequency pulses that eventually become the domain for sentient life in various dimensional densities. Got it? So, you are a basic step-down energy that can step up and assume your righteous self. Okay? This is just decoding the science for you, giving you an idea. The entire perceptible universe is composed of vibrations that emanate as waveforms. Waves or pure temporal patterns can only be understood through number. All life physically vibrates, and the notion that every vibrating body emits sound, listen, is the key to understanding the essence of our universe. Qualities of matter are actually differences in pulse periodicity. Do you understand what I just said? Qualities of matter is based on pulse periodicity. Each one of us is pulsing. How do we know we're pulsing? What's the indicator for the pulse? Yes. Why is it that they don't weigh your brain at the end of, the, of life? Because that damn thing don't count. It is through the heart that you measure yourself in life. In fact, your heart and your brain are two different, two different aspects of the same heart. One articulates for the visual world or the, or the physical world, which is your brain, and your heart is for the spiritual world. Mm. And that's why it has to be lighter than the feather of Ba'at before you can transcend. Okay, in biology, geometrical proportion is, illustrates that every atom of every molecule is being changed and replaced or upgraded. Genetic coding is a vehicle of replication and continuity. The DNA helix is a set of fixed geometrical proportions in consciousness. Mahayana saw time or ka'alam as a process in which absolute space commingles with itself to create own light, self-awareness, which then commingles with space again and again. Remember, I talk about redundancy for you to learn, which commingles with space in order for sound, and all those individual uh, elements, time, space, light, sound, air, fire, water, and earth, mix, unite, and flow together, ultimately manifesting as the material world. Listen to what Mahayan said. Time is the creative source of all objects. It is time that changes into form. It is time that blossoms into the universe. And Ka'alam thus does wonders. So time is actually an element. You perceive time as something abstract. That you gotta get to the job. That you gotta go to sleep and wake up. You gotta eat. You gotta That's not time. That's addiction. I don't think you really heard me when I said that. That's not real time. 
Time is what brought everything that you see in existence and whatever it is that you cannot see until your mind gets to that level to see it. That's what time is. Time is affording you the chance to get to see that. Time is affording you the ability to know God within. But you waste your time in churches. therefore is actually the speed or vibration of energy or light as it coalesces to take shape and form in the various body vehicles of sentient life. In the realm of matter, time is relative to the quantified vibratory rates of individual species forms. Now listen carefully. Time is relative to the quantified vibratory rates of individual species. In other words, time to a spider, time to a fish, Time to a bird or an amoeba is based on the pulse of perception qualifying the molecular atomic ingredients that make up their individual forms. Check? Check. Nah, you didn't understand the damn thing I just said. <laughs> In other words, time allows for the entity or the spark of creation to create the methodology and modality for traversing space, which is part of time. So a spider perceives time as a spark of spider with eight legs, because it needs eight legs based on its perception traversing space within the pulse of time that it represents. A bird, which is the element of the air, as the elements give life through its own spark of relativity, that spark now traverses the air based on its relative perception. So it grows wings to traverse time and space. Each thing is representing itself based on the pulse relative to the level of intensity of consciousness that that pulse represents within that species. And that's where we're going to climb to understand why the hell have you not done what you're supposed to have done based on the fact that your pulse hmm, has you on a higher level of understanding and understanding of self-awareness. Bird know where to go to eat. Bird know how to fly. Flap your damn arms and see what happens. Not a damn thing. You are about with the body we have we are about the weakest of all of the creatures and animals. All of them know how to take care of their damn selves but us. That's true. Hmm? Why is it that we have the longest child cycle of any animal on the planet? Because that means we live longer than any other animal on the planet. But you're dying at 65, and 40, 30. Your ancestors were leaving here at 300, 800, 1,000 years. That's because you've been wasting your time. And time has been wasting away from you. Hmm? Each animated entity organizes space and time within third density through their individual species-specific matrix of perception as elemental and environmental distinctions encompassing height, depth, length, volume, and distance and shapes their vehicular housing to operate within these perceptual structures. Thus, as a child of the air element, the bird codes the third density pulse of time and space by developing wings to bridge its own species-based perception of distance within the realms of matter. <laughs> See, what I'm doing, don't, don't, don't just think that this is just me flavoring you, you know, to give you an impression of what I know. That's nothing to do with this. What I need for you to know is who and what you are at the basic essence and why you are. Not just what you are, because I tell you what you are, you don't know what to do with it. But why are you? Thus time is encoded as a pulse of perception within the genetic consciousness of the species, within the structure of the chromosomes. Our chromosomes are locked into the time light vibrational constraints of third density. Time or frequency is the movement of consciousness within itself. Let me say that again. 
Time is the movement of consciousness within itself. The intention, the need to know or to be. Time, in effect, is simply space or God itself moving or vibrating. Why? One. What do you remember? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Two, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And what? Read it, family. Oh, everybody's asleep. Yo, brother, can you say something? You all asleep? I hear that. Read the last line, family. Class. Now, who the hell? What the hell does that mean? The spirit of God moved upon the face. What was the waters doing there? What is the waters? Understand that the Creator created sequences within itself to know itself because being all, it can't know itself. It can only be. And being itself, it just is. And if it just is, it has to separate from itself to kind of look at itself to say, oh, that's what I am. And that's why you're here. That's what I meant to that gentleman on Facebook when I say God is as dumb as a brick. If you understood what I meant and followed the rest of the tape, you would have probably come to this understanding. So, the reason why God is dumb as a brick is because we now God. We got the job. And we've been really fucking up shot. <laughs> Pardon me, I had to put that in there. We got to get back on the stick and get back to the process of knowing God, knowing self. Mahayan says that in the time that functions in every living being as in-breath and out-breath, time is the dance and space is the dancer. Mm. One and the same. Woo. Oh, he likes that one. No? Uh -huh. Go back to that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> What did I say? Let me see, what was that? Ah, no, I'm going back, I'm going back. Ah, come on back here. Ah, yes, so. Oh, okay. That's all right, that's all right. You're going to love what I'm doing. You're going to love what I'm doing. Ah, you like it? You like that, huh? Yeah. That's all right. We're going, to, we're, going to get in, we're going to get into all of that. Y'all just got to peek into the teacher's book. Right here. That was it? Yeah. Right. Ah, there it is. Okay, where did I say that? Time, time is the dance. Space, and space time is, is the dance. dancing. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. All right? <laughs> Let's go forward. Okay, come on, family. All right. The space-time light zone of third density is the arena where the geometrizing of time and light as individual self-awareness self ignites the chromosomes to live and generate. It is only when the chromosomes can transcend past the space-time light zone of third density that the divine spark of individuated self-awareness, you, can evolve to a higher resonant body of light. It will be through the realization of this over-self body of light that our species' intention to transcend will begin the biospiritual organic restructuring of cellular consciousness so that we may bypass certain chromosomal locks fixed by the habits of material intention that keep present humanity in its sense-based third density illusion. It's light code, time code, lockdown, placing us in direct resonance with the over-self, or what we call the eighth chakra. Mm. Okay, so now, what am I saying? We're saying that the chromosomes, now, break the word down, chromosomes. What does chromosome mean? Matter. Beautiful. Somebody knows. The word chroma means light. And soma, body. So, you have light bodies in you. Whoa. Whoa. So you function as a light body. That should give you a clue right there. It will be through the realization of this over-self, body of light, that our species' intention to transcend will begin. It's in your chromosomes. That's why they've been digging in your DNA. What do you think? 
that's where the the, the, the papyrus of Annie, that's the papyrus, it's the, it's the, what do you call that uh, place where they went, uh, the Rosetta Stone. They're chipping away at parts of what it is that you represent, the escape hatch. You are light bodies and you are transcending at the moment and they don't want you to transcend because they need you. Parasitic entities need a host. And the problem is that because they're parasites, they cannot transcend as you. They are not first order entities. They were not created specifically from the intelligence, from the intelligence matrix, what they call the universal consciousness mainframe. And because they cannot transcend organically, they are trying to do it technologically. And they got you now hooked up. Because I can see all of y'all on your, what? Smartphones. <laughs> Only dumb people get smartphones. <laughs> because they're telling you what you are. Yes. Look, you dumb motherfuckers, get some smartphone. <laughs> because you know you can't do this. Under and the thing is, you think that because you got a smartphone here. Yeah, you're smart. Yeah. <laughs> yay, yay. So, understand that you are on a journey and you have work to do. And so what is it? We're dealing essentially, if the reorganization of third density template geometry of genetic encoding aligns with the higher resonance pattern of the old self, the new frequency of light generated will allow a new physical manifestation to house the migrating soul. This is the reality overlap. You are a migrating light form and you are stuck in the specific territories of third density where you migrated to. And it's time to move on. Time out. Time in. What is matter beyond its electrons? Huh? Beyond its molecules, its cells, galaxies, and universe. Beyond what is seen through the binocular vision of the eye, the molecular lens of the, 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 the microscope or the telescope. What is the quintessential presence existing beyond our presently dysfunctional, obsolete retinal apparatus? You can't see it out of space. The Dogon saw it. They saw enough to map so put it, put it on their walls. But you got, you need glasses. I need to see this right in front of me. How the hell are you going to see it out of space? Hmm? What is man? And of course, when I say man, most sisters would say, oh, here he goes again. Is that patriarchal bullshit again? You know, men feeling good about himself. No. When I speak of man, I speak of all of us. Both. Man from mem, which is mother. So you started off. The first glyph was water. Representing the mother. The owl from there is the head of the penis, A, which is the invisible. See, man is causal, woman is effectual. See, it works. You might, you might want to get that. Yeah, it's smart. Smartphone. Smartphone. <laughs> what is man beyond the apparatus of thought? What is man beyond the apparatus of thought? And I say thought is an apparatus. It's such it's contained, it's artificial. Thought is artificial, why? Tell me why thought is artificial. The change is created, it's what he called, it's of the past. You cannot have a thought unless you have an experience to match it and to tell along it. Right now you're listening to me so you're not thinking. Ah. So, how do you get yourself to stop thinking? Learn. Learning suspends thought. Learning suspends thinking. Thinking is the recall of learning. So you cannot have a thought in the future. That's why you're stuck! Because you're in your thoughts. That's why they keep downloading information into your thoughts. 
That's why they got you thinking constantly. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. The idea of thought is that somehow the universe is thought and all that. No, the universe ain't thought. The universe is mind. Big difference. Thought is a container. You put things into it to recall later. I'm going to ask a question. Somebody give me a thought that's never been thought of in human existence. Cannot. Cannot. Cannot be. Why? There is no such thing as thought beyond the past. So every time you go back to your thoughts to look for solutions to how we make better our human condition, and you have no future. I don't think you got that. Thought is of the past. Only it cannot be of the future, so therefore you can use it as a reference, but you cannot use it to play in the future. There has to be you in the isness of being, and you have to transcend from the mechanism of thought to the operation of intelligence. Thought and intelligence are two different things. They operate on two different modalities. And we're going to get into that. What is man beyond the apparatus of thought, the nerve impulses of his or her brain, his or her concepts, his or her fears and third density aspirations? What is man beyond its present molecular atomic construct agreement? What is man beyond the popular pre-constructed propaganda that has become 2012? See, they are now preparing their cells to control 2012 because they got you pimping and, and, and mimicking everything they told you on the internet and everything about 2012. For all our latent potential as a spiritual species, present humanity is still deficient in the knowledge and application of the auto-initiated. I said auto-initiated, not synthetically initiated. Auto-initiated means from within. The auto-initiated process involved in the physics of manifestation from pure consciousness, which is absolute space. That is organizing a higher order of space-time from its unmanifested state in Vastu to its manifested state in Vastu. This lack of insight prevents us from acquiring the ability to access the codes of our next PC template to allow individuated consciousness to become God conscious in exponential degrees, occupying an entirely new human species of corporeal awareness. This body will not look the same at this time. Because in a whole new envelope, a whole new dimension, it can't exist. But it can. Oh, mother. I didn't see you there. How are you, beloved? You're great. It's Mother Rosalind Jeffries, one of my godfathers. Here we go. Oh, okay. You're my love. Yes, Ed Brown is another powerful teacher. So, understand that I know they said you shall put in a new body of light. They're all stealing your sciences and putting it into religious confines in order to keep you worshiping them. Okay? Stay away from religion. It keeps you ignorant. For an entire, you see, what, what do you just say? Do you notice the ones that's controlling you, they use the ram? Hmm? They use the ram as their symbol. And you call it devil, Lucifer, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, they say, be my sheep. Follow the shepherd. So Christians want sheep, but the Luciferians, they're dealing with rams. Now, dig where the rams are. Rams live in high places. <coughs> sheep live in the valley. Think about that. For an entirely new species of man to appear, the true mandate of Ascension 2012, that is, for transcendence to a new consciousness paradigm and awareness, an entirely new, new elemental restructuring of space-time must occur. Present humanity is trapped in a sequential, element-ordered reality complex. 
an element-ordered reality complex, hmm, as represented in the so-called periodic table, where each element represents a micropulse of matter-based perception fixed by the consciousness of previous humanities. Consciousness accretion through time reconfiguration of third density pulse-based perception is one's personal observer. In one's personal observer will be the key to liberating the spark, that trapped spark of present humanity, and allow it to become the transcendent new man being that represents the next cycle of perpetual awareness. And this can only take place through a self-initiated, self-steering, reprogramming of